Hello everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you guys the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO throughout this last week. Links to all the creations are listed in the description below. Like always, there's way more than just 10 cool builds. And before we jump into the top builds of the week, the custom model instructions that went up in the web store this week for www.brickvault.toys is the UCS Colonial Viper Mark 7 from David Duperon. It's an excellent sleek fighter built at a pretty large scale. Tons of details, extremely solid model, and it's a wonderful extension to the other UCS Battlestar Galactica themed builds that he's done in the past. Thank you for all the support, everybody. We just passed 600,000 subscribers. And there we go. Let's jump straight in to the honorable mentions before we get to the top 10. Jonas Cram did some excellently detailed vignettes, one of a kitchen and another one of a bathroom. The closer you look, the better both of these vignettes are. Haphazard Panda did the Gorillas Band in minifigures. They look excellent. Moko's MF-12 Desert Camel is one of the more brutal looking mechs I've seen come from this builder in a while. Zito Vince's Asterix and Obelix uses those awesome quarter round tan pieces in a really wonderful way for both the noses and the cheeks. Roland Smith titled this Hey Hey We're the Monkeys and takes advantage of a lot of those nice colors that came out from the recent Monkey Kids sets. From the builder TGBDZ, we've got an excellent ghost built it, somewhat a play scale, but extremely highly detailed. A Star Bricks did a custom holiday boba. This is what he looked like the first time you ever saw him, and we may or may not have bought a copy of him. Sunder59 did a dungeon. It's excellent. It's micro midi scale, but very, very dark and foreboding. This is Marco Deban's Micro Robot Mark V. The title for this one is International Cat Day. It may or may not have been on August 8th. It's from Nick Sweetman, and I don't think he's got enough cats here. He needs more cats. Here is a beautiful concept developed from Carter Witz. It's called the Landscape Painter, only of course you can see it done in the literal sense here. IMC Picture built the Lego Steampunk mech, and if they ever did a season four for the show Dark, I would want to see this there. Aiden Builds did a radial engine. Excellent model. Lestranger Absurd built his own pencil holder. I think it absolutely blows the pencil holders out of the water that came from the dots line. Here's some better photos from Cheesy Studios. Sloss Drakenberg was built a couple years ago in Lego, but it just looks a lot cooler here now. Titled Dick Penderin, this is a build from Dan Harris that outlines a real execution of a real person that actually happened a couple hundred years ago. Amazing details through and through. And then check out this Australian cockatoo from Kale Frost. That was not intentional, by the way, the rhyming. This particular architecture always grabs me. I really love the look of this. It is called Cavalry Stables Port Woodhouse by Airy Lego. Suck My Brick built the Fabluras Nard, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who is supposedly a very wise owl, imparting some great wisdom. Personally, I just love the feathering effect in the center. Dog God Brick Design built a much more life accurate looking owl, a little bit less cartoony. Excellent proportion. And now we've officially jumped into the first of the top 10 builds from Dave Catella. This build is titled Jonathan Taves. I don't know much about hockey. I just really appreciate uh, the build style that we have here. There is so much excellent detailing for the front of the jersey. The lettering in the back and the number looks so amazing. And there's a lot of attention to detail to giving this hockey player a proper stance. The knees bend inward, the toes splay out, and there's a lot of animation captured through and through. Number nine, moving down from Ordo or Fabian B. This is a Coruscant taxi. So I suppose you'd be able to see this thing flying around the city in the old Star Wars universe. And there's some really fun, excellent, sleek, stylistic choices. My personal favorite bit of detailing is the subtle bit of the cheese wedges that connect up with the one by two slopes in the back. The black heat dispersion bits along the hood look nice. And I gotta say, this looks pretty fun and pretty sleek for a taxi. 
Next up is a build, or I suppose several builds from Arrow O'Conan. First up here is Namen Springleaf, Disciple of Hurricane. Pointing out specific design choices for Arrow O'Conan is very difficult because almost everything is unconventional when he puts together figures. So it's better just to sit in awe sometimes in how a builder interprets connections for Lego bricks. The second character is titled Merla Glimmer, Salamander Sword Advocate. Don't ask me how or why, I have no idea. Maybe these are based on characters from some type of cartoon. I really don't know. I don't think so. And the last one we're looking at is Veron Zapper. Those boots are amazing. And there are other characters, but the reason why I'm focusing on these three is because he built the Spire of Zeal to go along with it, where they're all posing together. I don't exactly know what's going on here. All I know is that the connections are amazing. The characters are extremely interesting. And that cartoony cat at the top is my favorite thing ever. Next up, number seven, moving down is from the builder Aubrey B. Len called Cyberpunk Food Stall. This is one of those models that I think really captures that cyberpunk aesthetic well because it's broken down, it's a bit dirty, it's a bit grimy. You can see sort of uh, plants coming through the street and all the buildings are somewhat dirtied or tattered and have a lot of weird uh, little discrepancies and inconsistencies thrown in there, but it's extremely colorful. Everything's a bit gritty, but it's still fun. That hot dog is black, which I absolutely love. And the design for this hover bike speeder thing is also really, really cool. The cyberpunk aesthetic simply does not get old for me. Also the chameleon at the top on the yellow there. Okay, I'm just looking at all the details, really great. And number six from the build Woomy World, this is Lizard Man Chief. In the description, it simply says the proud chief of a group of warrior lizards. I don't know if uh, this is what people mean when they say that there is lizard people somewhere on the planet, but if they look anything like this, I think I'd be pretty freaked out. The inclusion of the bright pink hair with the braids on either side I think is really what gives you a lot of uh, personality and it sort of makes everything else pop quite well. And also Woomy World managed to get some excellent poses out of this brick built character. Number five is from the builder Caleb Saw called The Underworld. I'm gonna assume The Underworld of Coruscant again considering the troopers. And this is also one of those photographic uh, up close snapshots that we have where everything around you is built from Lego bricks. It feels like you're inside the world the size of a Lego go figure looking at the troopers coming down the corridor or the hallway and there are just some wonderful little details thrown in and around this model. My personal favorite touch here is the inclusion of all of those little tile pieces that pop up just by a hair and it gives you a much larger sense of scale when little things like that are intentionally thrown off. This is one of my favorite uses of any unique piece for any particular reason this week from Kale Frost. This is titled In The Lab, dot, dot, dot. You can kind of create a story around what you're looking at here. It looks like some scientists are messing around with a, a life form, possibly an alien life form in the center. But when you look up close, that is a troll's hairpiece turned upside down with a jewel in the center. I don't know how people get these kinds of ideas. They just do, and it looks amazing. Also, the inclusion of those larger balloon pieces as lights in the back sort of give me the impression that those are vats for suspending something in animation. Here is a micro build from Bricklias. I, I don't know how to speak German. I, I can't say the name of the title of this particular one, unfortunately, sorry. But you can see it as it must be a Harry Potter based build because the flying car is down there going between the arches of the bridge and there are just some excellent little design choices included. I like the little trees that are hanging off the edge of the steep rock side. The build for the archways themselves are pretty clever with those flexi tubes clipped on behind. And little micro scenes highly detailed like this usually have a soft spot for me. Also, the inclusion of those little tiny levers that are stuck between the grills right at the front of the train. That's an excellent little knot. Now we're jumping down to number two. Number two is actually three builds. Sorry, I'm breaking the rules. Some builders have been having a little bit of a play around competition, I think, with this white flowery kind of piece from Grant Davis. This is a Renaissance nobleman. You can see that piece being used for the frill of that really large and kind of strange looking collar. I also like his technique for the eyes that are looking off to the side, the mustache, excellent build. And then Grant Davis did Sean the Sheep. I love the mouth that sticks off the side of him. 
It's one of those models that is supposed to be looked at, I suppose, at a two-dimensional kind of angle, but it's one of the best versions of this style of build that I have ever seen. It is so spot on. And then also from the designer Japzap, this is called a dreamer's dwelling, and you can see that flowery white piece has been used for the tiling on the roof of this extremely steep roof. You can also see it for the smoke coming out of the chimney, and it makes up some of the layers of the trees, the white trees. Remember, not in order of any best to worst, these are just 10 builds I like. And number one is actually two builds, both from Simon Wilde, both are digital models, and both of them are based on designs from the YouTuber EC Henry, who's an excellent digital modeler. This first one here is the YX950 Glory Glider, and based on a Star Wars design that just kind of gets overshadowed. Technically, this existed a long time ago, and it's sort of a modern interpretation of what it might look like. And this one here is also a YX950, but titled The Brute, and it seems to not have uh, that sort of Carillion fork coming out one side with the pod-like cockpit in the front. The green milling details are excellent. The domed side of the cockpit with the old Falcon cockpit pieces looks really, really good there. It matches really well. And it's nice to see that the obscured and forgotten designs from early Star Wars are getting remembered in the design world, both uh, within normal 3D digital modeling and later now amongst LEGO designers too. Anyways, that is going to be it for the top 10 mocks of the week. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. Check out the web store if you haven't already. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah!